the arc that we have tragically seen with many others whose substance use disorder begins in a doctor's office and ends in the street. Perry turned to a street dealer, Eric Fleming, who sourced his ketamine from a drug trafficker known as the Ketamine Queen, Jasveen Sangha. The ketamine supplied by Sangha would ultimately be the dose that took Matthew Perry's life. Sangha knew that the ketamine she supplied could be deadly. Since in 2019, she had sold ketamine to Cody McGlory, who died at the age of 33. But despite this knowledge, she continued to sell ketamine and methamphetamine throughout Los Angeles. Matthew Perry's journey began with unscrupulous doctors who abused their position of trust because they saw him as a payday. And it ended with street dealers who sold him ketamine in unmarked vials. The desperation that led Perry to these individuals was not met with help, as it should have been from the doctors. But instead, it was met with exploitation. Yeah. Exploitation by those who should have guided him toward help. This betrayal of trust is at the heart of this tragedy. Since 2023, DEA has investigated nearly Same 500 person. drug poisoning and overdose no. cases just like Matthew Perry's. Gotcha. We run a national initiative known as OD Justice, where we work with our state and local law enforcement partners to conduct Thanks, investigations man. after someone has passed away. And it is important to note that the national model we today have in every 50 state across the United States is based on the work that started here in Los Angeles. We began this work with our partners in the Los Angeles Police Department and with other local police departments and sheriff's offices in California, in the Los Angeles area, and with the U.S. Attorney's Office. And today it stands as our national model for this critical work. Together, as part of OD Justice, we work to bring justice for the lives that have been lost and to stop others from dying. Thanks for helping, guys. Regardless of the size or scope of a drug distribution network, the DEA will work non-stop to uncover and disrupt this illegal activity, and in this case, the deadly activity. I want to close by noting... Just want to do a quick recap for people coming in. So five people have been charged in connection with the death of Matthew Perry. That has happened in the last 24 hours. There was a press conference this morning in LA. We have um, two doctors who actually preyed upon Matthew Perry and was selling him vials of ketamine for £2,000, or worth a street price of $12. Um, they carried on giving it to him and messaging each other like let's take this moron for all we can get when he could no longer meet those prices because he was fed up of being um, pulled over the coals and made to pay this money he actually reached out to street dealers who actually got it off a woman known as the Ket Queen of Los Angeles she was already um, being investigated for another death of a celebrity from the same thing and she actually sold the drugs to him on that day which took his life um, so she is facing life in prison and the guy, the doctor, who continued to give it to Matthew Perry to the extent which he sold him £55,000 of ketamine in a two-month period, eight weeks, which led to his downfall, actually ended up, um, he will face up to 120 years in prison because of what he's done. Um, they are very sure they have a very solid case here. And I am absolutely grateful that this tragedy may come some justice for Matthew Perry because... There is not much sadder in the world than somebody who was so vulnerable to addiction, who was so aware of his vulnerabilities that he had paid millions of pounds to build rehab centres all across Los Angeles for men specifically who dealt with addiction, but yet he would fall prey to the disease because of people who saw him as a payday, and that was all. Yeah. That Matthew Perry's death is not Matthew just Allen. a tragic overdose. After his 2020 book openly discussed his struggles with substance use disorder, Matthew Perry told podcast host Tom Power that he would prefer to be remembered for helping people rather than for his work on Friends as Chandler Bing. And so perhaps what has happened and the tragic details that we are discussing today can help others and save lives. I want to thank the Los Angeles Police Department the United States Postal Inspection Service, and the United States Attorney's Office in the Central District of California for their 
tremendous partnership and their outstanding dedication to this case. I also have the privilege of serving every single day with the men and women of the DEA. And today I want to particularly recognize the outstanding work of our Los Angeles Field Division, as well as our diversion investigators who tirelessly worked on this case to bring justice yeah. to the victims and the families. Thank you. It's now my privilege to introduce Postal Inspector Shields. Attorney Martina Strata for his tireless dedication to protecting the residents of the Central District of California and his partnership with the Postal Inspection Service. As the nation's oldest law enforcement agency, the Postal Inspection Service has had a long, proud, and successful history of combating criminals who misuse our nation's postal system the house and cause harm to our employees and customers. This is our mission. In this case, our agency... In um, sometimes if you post an emoji more than once now, it won't post. TikTok won't let it. Um, if I post like two red hearts, it doesn't post it. Good night, Sarah. Um, yeah, so sometimes it does do that. Um, same as Michael Jackson, 100%. His doctor got like eight years in prison. It wasn't enough. Um, Matthew Perry had depression. He was struggling. He also had addiction issues. Like He was very vulnerable and very open to the fact that he was vulnerable, that, that he had been an addict 10 times over, that he was struggling. Um, thank you for the heart meets, guys. It's after 12, so if you haven't sent one yet, please do send one. Um, it's, it's very sad. Partnership with the Los Angeles Police Department. I know, Abby. Los Angeles Drug Enforcement Administration and the U.S. Attorney's I'm Office. Back. Work to seize, search, and analyze evidence that, that has guys. culminated in arrests and a dismantling of the group that is responsible for providing the ketamine and the thank reported... You contributed to the death of Matthew Perry. In this case, <clears throat> these individuals knowingly and willfully distributed ketamine to Mr. Perry as he struggled to overcome addiction, which ultimately led to Mr. Perry's tragic demise. Unfortunately, every day in this country, families are grieving for their loved ones lost to drug overdoses. We want these families and the American public to know that the post service will not be an unwitting accomplice to anyone using the U.S. mail to distribute oh, illegal just cut it off there because it's just, they're just repeating it. Different. <gasps> thank you, Sasha. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for the heart meets, guys. I just think this is um so sad. Like so sad. It just makes it's tragic. It's really tragic. And I think I think everybody in here, like I don't know. Let me just ask because I'm just curious. Put a smiley face if your growing up stage, your teenagers, your 20s, whatever, was made better by Matthew Perry. Like, honest, put a smiley face. If you never really come across him, I've never watched anything of his, never had a laugh to him, never felt like your day was a bit better because of Chandler and Joey's relationship, or, you know, do you know what I mean? I get goosebumps thinking about it. Like, literally, when he died, I was heartbroken, like, to the extent I, did, I talked about it once and I just thought, I can't even talk about it because I see a lot of myself in Matthew Perry. It's hard to talk about. But he needs, um, he needs to be, to have help. Let me just see if I can find. I don't need to know that. So, Chavez is a 40, 54 year old doctor from San Diego. Thank you for the gifts, guys. Um, has agreed to, agreed to plead guilty to one count of conspiracy to distribute ketamine. Iwasama, Iwamasa, a 59 year old from Tolka Lake, California, pleaded guilty on August 7th to one count of conspiracy to distribute ketamine, causing death after performing multiple injections on Perry on October the 28th, 2023, the day he died. Eric Fleming, 54, of Hawthorne, California, also pleaded guilty to one count of conspiracy to distribute ketamine and one count of distribution of ketamine resulting in death, which was the dose that killed Perry. Miss Forget, five people have been charged today in, in, in conjunction with his death for either dealing it to him or providing the drug that helped him kill himself. Um, 
they sold him over a two month period, 55,000 pounds worth of ketamine, which they knew and had discussed in text messages that they were destroying him and that he was spiraling. And yet they still continued. One of the doctors said, let's see how much money we can make out of this moron. And they were actually getting vials of ketamine worth $12 and selling it to him for 2000 pounds. He actually took literally on the day he died was injected several times and despite the fact he had a spike in his blood pressure they continued to leave it by his side um freddie it's not really a question of did he want to take the drugs addiction is a very cruel disease and when you purposely find someone who's very vulnerable from addiction and you purposely do things like this it is very very concerning um they played upon his vulnerability and they gave him the weapon in which to kill himself and that's what they would be charged with the doctor who actually was laughing at him and saying he was going to destroy him basically um is looking at 120 years in prison and the lady whose name that's fine it's a good question to be fair freddie if you've never had addiction or whatever you don't know um the woman who's called the Ket queen of los angeles who is already suspecting the death of another hollywood star will actually face life in prison Let me just um, do this quickly. Uh, where is my thing? So the, the vials they actually sold him were worth a street value of 240 pounds altogether and they sold it him for $55,000. Like... He will get justice. I'm a big believer that he will get justice. Hmm. Yeah, it's absolutely devastating. There's so many. Um, if you look at um, you look at the Hollywood scene in general, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, her daughter. You look at things like um, Aaron Carter, just all of these people, Heath Ledger, like these people all died from somebody knowing that they were wanting drugs and you see them as a perfect target. You can make thousands. And they're also people that don't want anyone to know they're doing it because they're in the public eye. So River Phoenix, I always break my heart. You look at them as a perfect target. I've done Michael Jackson once actually. Um, done his case I should say Amy Winehouse was another tragic one um, yeah I was going to tell you something personal then but I'm not going to just because of today on TikTok I was going to tell you something about Winehouse then but I'll tell you another time um, Corey Heyman, Corey Feldman um, have you done Juice World? not yet I haven't no I love Juice World though Judy Garland, Marilyn Monroe Marilyn Monroe was given several drugs at night in order to help her sleep um, Heath Ledger is a weird one yeah, I always do like, I do cases in like week long things. So like I've done a whole week of like celebrity deaths where I've done like Michael Jackson, I've done like Tupac, I've done Biggie, I've done all those kind of things. Um, I've done Marilyn Ma uh, Monroe before. I need to do River Phoenix sometime because I'm a massive River Phoenix fan. And I'm a Nicole Smith, absolutely. Um, my heart always broken by Anna and Nicole Smith because she deserved better. She deserved better. And the way the world betrayed her over and over again was so sad. And you could just see it every time she talked, man. Every time she talked, she literally, you could see she just never found a place in the world. And then as you started to go on and you would just see it. Um, love stand by me, I do too, Glenn. Uh, you know, you would just see it on her face and then she'd start slurring and all the people around her. And all these people literally believe that they can just make money off these people and just don't care about their lives you think about the normal everyday addict on the street yeah so say you talk about a h addict yeah i can only say that so if you talk about a h addict on the street if you all of a sudden give them 60k they're going to be dead they're going to be dead like if you have to like they literally on the streets just take what they can get hold of every day i've done Brittany murphy as well actually the case um if you just allow them unlimited supply very quickly you're going to up 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 up, up your doses and gone and in this case, we do it to somebody who absolutely has unlimited money and they're all messaging each other like, let's see what we can do to this moron. Let's see how much money we can get out of him. And they were all complicit in planning his death, basically, because you knew what was going to happen. And this doctor, especially this one doctor who's looking at 120 years in prison, 
he absolutely knew what he was doing. He absolutely knew that, he, and he was saying things to people like, Matthew is, but he's smiling out of control. Like he's had so much in the last eight weeks. Like he only fell back into this because he was going to, oh, Chester, don't. He was literally going to a doctor and having a nasal spray of ketamine, which is actually a treatment for depression. And he got addicted. And I don't understand even then why you would give an, a, a, a drug that's addicted, that will get you addicted to an addict. Like in, in any amount. Like why do that? Robin Williams. Why give it to him? Because you know this man has the absolute ability to get whatever he wants of it. So you give him this for depression and then he asks for more and you go, no, nope, we're not giving you no more now. You know he's going to go and get more. You know he's got the means to get more. So I wonder if that the people from those clinic with those red flags of he already wants to up his dose after only like a month, if they were tracking what was happening to him. Because that makes me mad. And now I'm starting to worry about li wonder about little facts we knew in the case. So like his assistant, for instance, yeah, we knew on the day that Matthew Perry died, his assistant wasn't in the house. And he said it was because Matthew Perry had sent him to town that day to buy a new mobile phone for him. A second device. And we had no reason not to believe that at the time because Matthew Perry's not here to say, no, I didn't. So now it looks like maybe he was trying to buy another phone because he already knew Matthew was dead and he was trying to get rid of his phone. Absolutely heartbreaking. Where's my... Let's go to chat with Blue Hearts Matthew. Blue Hearts! That doesn't sound right, does it? Why does it sound weird? Oh, that's not the right one. It's better. It's gonna be this way The job's a joke you broke The love lies to your way It's like you're always stuck in second gear When it hasn't been your day, your week, your month Or even your year But I'll be there for you I'll be there for you Like I've been there before Cause you're there for me too You better pretend you work again at aim Burned your breakfast so far, things are going great Your mother won't you, there'll be days like these But she can't tell you when the world will drop you down to your knees I'll be there for you Sorry about my singing those words are like so poignant where it says um no one could ever know me no one could ever see me seems like you're the only one who knows what it's like to be me someone to face the day with make it through all the rest with someone i'll always be with even at my worst i'm with you i think that's so sad thank you absolute um it's um look at that photo just makes me sad man just makes me sad like the fact that you could go on camera and always like play the buffoon and always be so funny and just didn't know he was in a personal world of pain all the time. Like when we watched the Friends reunion, he just kind of said like the whole time I was pretty much off my head. Like I lost weight, like I couldn't do it, I couldn't be me, I couldn't be funny all the time. Like it just devastated man. It does feel like he's just died again. I remember when he died just literally feeling like absolutely like the world had been robbed of something. Got any juice? Yeah, 
Probably. Can you not come on camera again? Because people have filmed you and put all over TikTok. Huh? Weirdos. Hey. Yeah. When? When you were on Lovely. Yeah, that's noncy behaviour, but... It does, doesn't it? It feels like such a loss and it just like... Do you know, I always think like people who are like really genius level or like really talented also have a real sadness in their heart. Like, hey Zia, hey, thank you, absolute. They have a real sadness that literally they just can't get rid of. Look at Picasso, for instance. I literally, you know, I put my heart and soul into my work and in the process I lost my mind. Like he always said, it's one of my favourite ever quotes. Oh, thank you, Zia. Thank you, oh, look. <laughs> thank you Zia um, it is so true because it literally like when you're very clever or very emotionally in tuned there is another side to that there is a side like I am a really empathetic woman right I'm literally I love everyone I'll do anything for anyone I put my heart and soul into these cases but at the same time my soul is dark man I'm sad like I have so I've literally I don't know I've ever felt truly happy I've never felt content for sure um there's a real like sadness that makes you a better person like it's like a yin and yang like thank you Zia you can't um a lot of creative people yeah you literally um no Jodie there, there is a real kind of yin and yang to it like to be an empath and to have all that empathy is normally because you've been hurt by the world so many times um it's true sweet cheeks like I've, I've I've grown to accept it like I've come off my tablets even because the doctor said you'll never be different you'll never you'll never feel any different it, it's your chemical makeup in your head it's not something that's happened in life even um there's a sadness I'll always feel um there's a loneliness I'll always feel like I could have 890 people in the room like I still feel alone it's not um the only time I perhaps don't feel alone is when I'm in the midst of things with my children like that's it um do you know what I mean it's um the silence can be really deadly sometimes when you're just on your own you know but at the same time i really enjoy being by myself like there's a real kind of um light around just being alone and being good with who you are as a person but at the same time if you cut me open i would be almost black just from pain that's the truth um there is a real kind of like i'm hoping one day it changes and maybe sometime i'll feel some kind of light and i think it's only in darkness that you can see the light and i'd like to think because of the darkness inside of me that i put out light into the world which is why like even with like the lives being held about me in the last 24 hours have been hard very very intense okay um i have heard pretty much what everyone has said and there's not one thing I've said where I thought, that's the truth. Like, or that's who I am. Or, oh, I've done that to someone. This is all twisted, a hate train of people trying to make a name of me. Like, I'm good with myself, man. I'm good with myself because I have a mod team and people around me. If I was acting like a brat or a bitch or all the things they were saying, absolutely would have told me by now. And every decision I make, even with blocking someone, it's something that goes into my mod team. And I'm like, am I reading this the right way or has this happened? So I always double, I always question myself. But there's no lives you can hold, hide, hold about me that will hurt me more than I hurt myself. Nothing you can do that will sabotage me more than I sabotage myself on a daily basis. Like you can't touch someone who is already hurting themselves. <laughs> you just can't. So it's just, it's just like, it's bollocks at this point. And Rachel, that's a really good point, yeah, because the main people who are sat in those boxes are people I've blocked. Now, people have a real sense of entitlement on this app that you're not allowed to block them. I'll block whoever the fuck I like. I will protect my peace at all times. Now, if my mods come to me and say, this person made a comment about you on a video, I'll block you. Like, don't be in my live, like, feeding yourself on my content when you can't even be a fucking decent person, for sure. Like, I will block you. If I see you sat in a hate live about me, I'll block you. Fact. Like, and I don't owe it to anyone not to block you. And it's just how it will always be. And I have people who live in Del Max Lives, like in the comments going, you blocked me. And I'm like, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Likewise, if someone in my life gets blocked, right, and you message me on Instagram and go, I actually got blocked. Um, I actually got blocked and it was an accident. And I'm like, go to my mods. I'm like, did we block this person on purpose? They're like, I don't remember it. I'm like, well, can we unblock them then? It's simple, right? When you have over a thousand people in your room most nights, it's very hard for the mods to never make a mistake or myself. Like it's normally if we, I block someone by accident, it's me that's done it. 
um, Sophie's constantly coming to me going, did you just do this in the Discord? I'm like, yeah, I kicked her by accident. Got the wrong person. Because um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. But it's, it's never it's never malicious, right? I don't block anyone out of hate. Yet. I don't even hate Tenerife Tom. I don't hate him. I feel sorry for him. I don't hate anyone. I literally just block people to protect my platform protect my people and protect the future people who will come on to speak about their cases because I don't want people around me like that. Hi BDP, I see myself using so much. Callie, I don't even know what I've got at this point. Um, I was diagnosed with chronic depression and also with um, anxiety, which I get a lot. Social anxiety I get. Um, but when I when I when I when with the ADHD thing, I think a lot of it's misdiagnosed. But there's definitely like there's just a hole in my soul and in my heart. Do you know what I mean? It would never be filled. I don't know if it was ever there to begin with. I remember being like three and four and five and feeling this way like always. Um, I'm one of six children. I was always on my own. Always, always played by myself, talked to myself, everything. Um, so I don't remember before the depression. There was no before. Thank you, Georgie. Um, and it never came from, I had a shitty childhood, yeah, don't get me wrong, like, grew up in homeless accommodation and stuff like that, um, didn't have a dad growing up, but it was never, I can't tell you why I feel this way, I feel this way because I feel this way and I've always felt that way, and I've, I've come to accept it, like, I wouldn't be who I am, and have the interest I have, and have the love I have in my heart, and have the kind of ability to empathise with every victim I cover, if I didn't have that love in my heart. So I just want to quickly mention this because I said I would tonight. Um, um, thing, like honestly, um, I literally feel for you guys, but I do understand why. Um, understand why um people would want to shut out the outside world um i do understand that solidarity to all of you yeah it's um yeah it is good um yeah Yeah, everyone, I hope you feel better. Yeah. All right, Rebecca, we just went over the Chandler Bing case today. Um, obviously, Matthew Perry, the five people in been charged today in conjunction with his death. So, it's just... Um, Um, yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm absolutely fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Nothing. I'm fine. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You're all amazing, literally. And if anyone ever needs me, obviously, let me know. It's literally... um. Today's been heavy, hasn't it, man? Today has definitely been heavy. Um, so. <clears throat> oh, that's really cute. Thanks for sending me that, Paul. That's really nice. Um, yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. S-Y-M. So, yeah. Could you be any more wonderful? <laughs> I'm not that wonderful, trust me. I'm just as broken as everyone else in the world. Um, oh, thank you, Georgie. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Right, guys, I'm going to come off because it happened and I'm taking the kids out tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to come offline. But I love you all. Thank you for coming today. And tomorrow we'll do a proper case. It's just tonight, literally. I've been constantly thinking about this with Matthew Perry. Um, but I love you. And I literally am here if anyone needs anything. I hope you all have a good night's sleep. Love you.